So over the past couple of weeks, I've been teaching how to write the uh, hiragana alphabet, which is a Japanese alphabet. Uh, so starting today, I will be teaching you the katakana alphabet. So katakana is um, the alphabet that's used for foreign words. So basically anything that didn't originate in the Japanese language. So that can be anything from English to German to Dutch to French. Um, so they're words that the Japanese use to describe things or products or foods that they use that are originally from a foreign country. Uh, so just giving you a reminder of the sounds that we go through. So we have our vowels that we pronounce a, i, u, e, o. So we, they do it in a different order than we do in the English alphabet. So I'm going to do kind of a side-by-side -side comparison of hiragana and katakana as I introduce each character. So this video will, uh, this video series will be a little bit longer in terms of video length just because of, uh, I wanted to show the comparison. How a lot of the katakana is different in appearance, but there are a few katakana characters that are almost the same as the hiragana characters. So first we're going to start with a. Uh. So you may remember that the hiragana a uh looks like this, and I can tell you right now that the uh, katakana a uh looks nothing like that. So basically what it is, is kind of like a hook. So you're going to start on the top left corner, and you're going to go across towards the right corner, come back, hook down a bit, and then come straight down. So you can see that there's really no, diff or no similarity between the hiragana a uh and the katakana a. Uh. So again, I'll show you how to write a. Uh. It almost kind of looks like a squished uh, capital P. So you're going to go left to right, down. Left to right, hook around, down, and there should be a bit of a curve when you make that line go down. Left to right curve, down. And that is a. Uh. So the next one is E. So remember that E in the hiragana looks like this. In katakana, it looks kind of like a slanted T. So I'll show you how to do the E. So you start kind of right side center. And you're going to go slightly down towards the left. And then in the middle of that, you're going to go straight down. And that is E. Again, so see how it looks like a slanted capital T. Like so. So the next one that we're going to learn is U. Now U, here's what it looks like in Hiragana. And then in Katakana. So they actually do kind of look similar. It's almost like they took the U in hiragana and gave it angles. So you have first in the center a line that goes straight down. Then you're going to go off to the left and you're going to do another short line going down. And then a line that's going to connect these two going across. And then it's going to swoosh back. So it looks similar to U in terms of that line kind of in the middle and a swooshing shape. So let's try drawing that U again. This is for kata, the katakana u. So going small line, another small line, a long line to connect the two, and swoosh it down. Short line, short line, long line, swoosh. Last time. Short line, short line, long line, swoosh. Short line, short line, long line, swoosh. Okay, and that is U. E in hiragana. Remember that we did a little small dash going across. Then we go left to right, down, left to right with a swoosh. And the katakana E looks nothing like it. It almost looks like a capital I. So you're going to do a line going left to right. Uh, on the top, you're going to come and make a line going down, and then 
another line that's slightly longer than the top line going across. And that is A. So again, show you how to write that. Medium sized line, kind of a short line in between, and then an even longer line at the bottom. So like a capital I or the Roman numeral one. Like so. Okay, another one, or the last of the vowels on its own is O. So remember the O in hiragana, you do a small line across, you come down, and you're going to kind of swoosh it around, arch it over, and then you're going to do a dash across. The katakana O also does not look anything like hiragana, so you're going to take a line and it'll go across left to right, a line going down with a little tick at the bottom, and then from where the midsection where the two lines meet, you're going to do another line going from right to left, going down. So again, drawing O. Line across, line down with a tick, and a diagonal line going from right to left. Cross, down, tick, line across, one more time. Line across, down, and angle. Cross, down with a tick, angle. So our next ones that we're learning are ka, ki, ku, ke, ko. So a reminder of what the hiragana look like. Like so. So now I'll show you the comparison of the katakana versions and how to write the katakana versions of those. So starting with ka. Now ka in hiragana and katakana are actually very similar. So here is our hiragana. Line across. So you're going to notice that a lot of the katakana characters are very angular. They're very straight lines and straight corners. Um, not a lot of it is very smooth other than parts where it kind of swishes off kind of on the bottom. Uh, so the ka in katakana is very similar to hiragana in that it goes across, down with a little bit of a tick, and a line across. The only thing it doesn't have is that small little tick there. So again, very similar to hiraganaka, you go across, down, tick, and then an angle going down like so. So from left to right, down with a tick, and then an angular line going straight down. One last time, and going down. Okay. Now, ki is also kind of similar, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, so, hiragana ki is again, we do two short lines going across, left to right, then we do a line that goes through the two of them, and it flicks back, and kind of a smiley face. So, ki keeps in, uh, in katakana keeps similar in that it does the, keeps two lines. So, it's going to be again, left to right, left to right with the line going through, and that's where it stops. There's no kind of a smiley face or a swoosh at the bottom. So again, writing key, left to right, a little longer, left to right, and a line going through. So it doesn't have to be quite as angled as I'm doing it. So I'll try to make it less angular this time. Left to right, left to right, and down. Like so. So that is key. Ku, you remember in Hiragana, is very easy to write. It's basically two angles going from right to left and then left to right. Ku in uh, Katakana is different. You're going to start kind of off to the left center and you're going to go 
right down to the left. You're then going to do another line that meets with that top across and bring it down. And you'll see that as we go through the, um, as we had in the hiragana alphabet, we had some characters that looked very similar. Uh, the same thing happens with katakana. There will be characters that look similar, and again, I'll show kind of the side-by-side -side comparisons for the ones that do look similar. So again, I'm going to write ku. So short diagonal line, a line that meets at the top of that, and then comes back down, and that is ku. Down, across, down. One last time. Down, across, down. Okay, the next one is K, and here's what the hiragana K looks like. And here is what the katakana K looks like. So you're going to start here and do a small line going down, then we're going to do from left to right across, and then straight going down. So like a capital T that has a little tick on the side of it. Again, we're going to learn how to write that on its own. I'm going to start with that small little tick, then a line going across, and a line going down on an angle. Again, like so, and down with an angle. And that is K. One more time. Down, across, down with an angle. Okay. Next is Ko. So ko is going to be like so. Hiragana ko. Hiragana has a line on the top and a line on the bottom. Katakana is similar. It does have a line at the top and the bottom. It just has a line that connects the two. So the first, you're going to start at the top, go across, and you're going to bring it down. And then you're going to do another one at the bottom to make it connect. So you can see how they're similar. It's just a line that connects them rather than there being a space between the two lines. So again, I'm going to write ko. So we have a line going across and coming down, and then a line going across at the bottom. So it kind of looks like three quarters of a box. Line going across, down, and a line at the bottom. One last time line going across, coming down, and then one at the bottom. And that is cool. So the next set that we're going to learn, or the last set that we're going to learn today, is the S characters. So a reminder of those ones. Sa, Shi, Su, Se, So. So in uh, Hiragana, Sa, Shi, Su, Se, so, and then they'll show you the katakana versions as well. So, sa in hiragata, hiragana looks very different from the one in katakana. So, we have that line going across, the line that goes through, it comes down and ticks, and kind of a smiley face. In katakana, it's a line across, and then you're going to come to the left side, do a line going down, and then go to the right side, do a line going down and swerving in. You can see that there really isn't any similarity between the two. So again, for sa, you're going to do the line going across, then down, and one that goes down again, but further, and it curves in. You can curve it in even more. So line across, line down, line curve in. One last time, line across, line down, line going down with a curve. She is a bit of a tricky one. She in the hiragana is just kind of almost like a backwards J shape. She in katakana has kind of angles to it, so it's almost like quotation marks that you start with. You're going to start with, on the left hand side, kind of an angled line going like this, and another angled line going like that. Then you're going to start kind of at the bottom of, say, your imaginary box, and you're going to then swoosh up. 
So the reason why this is difficult is because there is another character, Sue, which is very similar in appearance, but it starts with kind of quotation marks that don't go quite as angled, and you start from the top and you work your way down. Okay, but we'll save Sue for tomorrow, and then I'll show you the comparison between the two. So remember that she starts with one tick on the top, one tick underneath it, start from the bottom, and flick your way out. Almost sideways quotation marks, and swish it out. One last time. Angled quotation marks, start from the bottom, and swish out. And that is she. Sue in hiragana, Sue in katakana. So as you can tell, again, one of those characters that doesn't re look really anything like the uh, other. So Sue is pretty easy. Start from the top left, work your way right, come back down towards the left, then do another line that kind of intersects in the middle, and come down towards the right. Across, down, middle, down. Across, down, middle, down. So both seis in hiragana and katakana look pretty similar. So you're going to start with the hiragana sei, which is the line across, and we have the line going down, and another line going down and curving. Now the say in katakana has that line going across, but it kind of takes back, and it doesn't have the line that goes here, but it does have the line that goes here. So you can see that there is similarity in the appearance. So say on its own in katakana, left to right across with a tick, down and over. Left to right with a tick, down and over, like so. One last time, like so. Okay, and the last one that we're going to learn today is so. So if you remember what so looks like in hiragana, to me it kind of reminds me of a quarter rest in music, but the so in uh, katakana is completely different. So. Basically, you're going to start with a kind of small little tick on the left-hand corner, and then you're going to do another one kind of going from the right-hand side. You're going to do a line going down, and that is so. So see, they look absolutely nothing the same. So again, on its own, down and down. Small tick, long line. small tick, long line, and that is so. So that's basically everything that we're going to be learning today in terms of katakana characters. I will be doing more katakana characters uh, tomorrow. Of course, there'll be another 15, so the next ones are going to be ta chi tsu te to, na ni nu ne no, and ha hi hu he ho. So those will be the next uh, 15 characters that we learn. And then on Thursday, we'll learn uh, the next 16 characters. So again, I'll do side-by-side -side comparisons of all of the um, hiragana and katakana. So let's do, before I end the video, let's review the katakana that we learned today. So we learned a, i, u, E, O, Ka, Ki, Ku, Ke, Ko, Sa, Shi, Su, C, 
say and so. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for tomorrow when we'll be learning our next 15 characters. Until then, see you later.